I'm as excited as a child, all dressed up in a hanbok, about to attend a Korean tea ceremony. I've never been part of something like this before and I'm really looking forward to it. I love being in a hanbok, but can't help thinking if the Korean women look more at ease in it than I do. I bow in greeting to Kim Ok Hee, who will be the mistress of ceremonies, and to my hostess, Kyung Sun Shin. I will be watching the mistress of ceremonies closely to follow her subtle gestures because a ceremony like this is all about knowing when to do what. You can't skip a step or take another sip of tea whenever you want to. You always look to the mistress of ceremonies to guide and direct you. Throughout the tea ceremony, when an object is lifted up or put down, the hands are used like this, the right hand with fingers all together and the left hand also with fingers all together, placed on the cuff of the sleeve in a parallel line. This is a sign of respect. A traditional Korean tea ceremony is called a dare and is about the enjoyment of tea in a formal yet relaxed setting. Though a first timer like me didn't feel quite so relaxed. Now I'm about to receive the tea and there's a special way that I need to take it. I need to put both my palms out, fingers together, stretch out my hands this way and receive the tea from my hostess like this and then place it between the table and the cushion on which I'm sitting. Finally, there is the sipping, which only happens after the guest takes her first sip. Great tea masters have espoused the meditative value of tea ceremonies, and I can see why. Taking tea the right way involves more focus than anything else I have done all day. The tea ceremony is now over. Normally when I drink a cup of tea, I don't think about it at all. But this tea ceremony has taught me something every step of the way. It's like I've been present every moment. With that done, the mistress of ceremonies covers the teaware with a crimson silk cloth until another occasion or visitor calls for a new dare.